Greetings, Dan Sabo here. Um, I wanted to make a, a video record of a, uh, uh, a City of Plymouth, Michigan um, Historic District Commission meeting I attended uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, that would have been August 7th, uh, 2019. It's now uh, Friday morning, August 9th. And I wanted to get this on, on vid while it's still fresh in my mind. Um, and <clears throat> I hope other Historic District Commissions see this video particularly historic district commissions across the state of Michigan um, uh, as an example of how not to do historic preservation in your communities. Um, and I, I was really quite amazed uh, at this meeting because uh, just to give you a little brief background, there's a historic site within the historic district uh, that includes an old um, building, about a century old, and uh, a few historic homes. Uh, and a developer wants to um, uh, the good part of the project, they wanted to restore that building and, and bring it up to code and, and uh, make it functional. Uh, but as part of the deal, they want to demolish homes within the historic district adjacent to that property. And, and they want to make that as part of the project. They want a huge parking lot and they want to build modern style road, rows, row houses within the historic district. And um, <clears throat> So originally the city bought the site because they wanted to tear everything down to build a parking garage there. And that plan was defeated some years ago. So now the, the developer wants, in exchange for for uh, fixing up that building as, as part of the bargain, he wants to demolish homes so he can have his project too. Um, and <clears throat> the, the, the way the meeting went was, in, to, to the way I saw it, the way I perceived it, it the meeting was totally and entirely rigged. Um, because on the one hand, there's the city master plan that calls for major development uh, within the historic district. And you've got the historic district commission um, trying to protect that property. So the city master plan directly contradicts the mission of the historic district commission. Um, and uh, at the meeting, the developer architect got up in front of the commission and said, well, okay, this is what we want to do. We're going to do all these wonderful things to the building. And that's great. Uh, and I, and for, and for that part of the plan, I, I uh, commend the architect for, for, for wanting to do that. But on the other hand, in exchange for that, he wants to tear down historic homes. Now, um, and, and the arrogant part about that is that it was a take it or leave it offer. He said several times that this project cannot proceed uh, without us having the ability to demolish those homes. And, and he said it more than once. I think he said it three or four times during the meeting um, that, that that was the stipulation. He, he has to have those homes torn down. So in the historic, and after everybody made their comments, the historic district commission started their discussions and uh, Four of the members, from what I could see, were against demolition, and they were against the plan, and they wanted a revised plan. They wanted uh, they wanted the uh, uh, architect to and the developer, the builders, to come back with a new plan that that uh, either did not include demolition, or at least show research or studies as to why those homes had to be demolished. Um, which they did not do, admittedly, at the meeting. They were asked that a couple of times. Did you do any studies or surveys as, as to how this could be done without demolishing the homes? So anyway, uh, the developer made that very clear to the, the commission that the plan cannot proceed without uh, demolition of those homes. The committee, uh, the, you had the chair of the committee reading off the, uh, the, the committee rules and the charter of the committee indicating it's their job to protect uh, historic structures and uh, uh, as per state and federal guidelines and on and on and on. And they basically all agreed that what their mandate was. And then you had one member, one member of the Historic District Commission ask a city staffer, I believe, his name was uh, John, I think, who was sitting off on the sidelines uh, asking, is there a way that we could uh, allow this project to proceed with conditions, and and the, the staffer started lobbying. It, it seemed to me that he was lobbying in favor of the project, lobbying on behalf of this builder because the city wants their their project passed. Um, so now, 
a historic district commission, they're supposed to either say, yes, you can proceed with your project as, as proposed, or no, you can't proceed with this project. And if you want to come back with a new plan, come on back. That's what they're supposed to do. But instead, they said maybe. They said, conditionally, you have to meet certain conditions. Uh, you can proceed and now go on and talk to the planning commission, city commission, whatever. Um, but we want we want to see more information. We want to, and, and it was really, to me, it was quite nebulous. It was unclear as to what those conditions were. But assuming that they were, we want to see you prove that you have to remove those homes or, uh, or, or why, why you can't do this project without demolishing homes. So instead they did a maybe, which was really stupid because now the historic district, district commission and the developer and the city staffer all painted themselves into the corner because the developer said several times at a public meeting, this project can't proceed unless we can remove those homes. And the commission still votes yes to allow those this project to proceed. So in essence, they're saying yes to the developer who has said to them on the public record that the project can't proceed without development, uh, without a demolition of those homes. So now they, the city historic district commission is painting themselves in the corner because they look like they're voting yes and no, uh, and it's all muddy. <laughs> and um, the developer should not have taken that. If he really wanted at least to salvage some of the project, he shouldn't have gone up there and said all or nothing. That was quite arrogant. And the other crazy thing that was proposed at this meeting, uh, there was an offer by the developer to uh, move the homes, uh, relocate them within city limits to possibly a spot that is not in the historic district. Well, that's stupid too because the whole purpose of the historic district is to protect the structures that are in that district. You move them outside of the district, they're not going to be protected any longer. So, and, uh, and then you've got a city staffer who looks to me like he's lobbying on behalf of the, of the developer to the city commission, to the historic district commission. So he, he, uh, he, it's obvious that he was siding with the developer. He didn't even have a vote. And there he is in discussions with the City Historic District Commission as to why you can proceed and vote yes. So now uh, I do not see, uh, well, first of all, I saw a very weak, very spineless Historic District Commission on Wednesday night because they admit what their job is, is and then they vote, and then a few minutes later they vote counter to what, what their, their role is in the community. And... Um, they're going to have this developer jump through all these hoops with the planning commission or whatever, and then they have to come back to the historic district commission uh, to get permission to either um, demolish those homes or, or save them or whatever. I, I don't see that commission voting no on this project, especially after they told these people, yes, you can, you can proceed with the project. It's, it's just crazy. <laughs> so this idea that it's a conditional yes, is, is thrown out the window because the developer already said he can't do the project unless he tears down those homes. So um, anyway, this is a good example of how not to run a historic district commission in the state of Michigan. Your job is to either say yes or no. And if it's no, invite them to come back to appear before the commission. Um, but when you vote, when they voted yes, they were agreeing with the developer and his assertion that those homes had to be demolished. It's, it's just crazy. So um, it remains to be seen what happens. I think that the Historic District Commission, if they're going to continue to allow these historic homes and structures to be demolished within the district, uh, these two homes would make number 10 and 11, I think, something like that. Um, bottom line, What's the purpose of having a historic district and a historic district commission in a historic community? If that historic district commission is going to continue to allow homes and structures to be become demolished, it's it's pointless. And and to me, 
it, it's just fraud on the part of City Hall because uh, they want to create this image of the City of Plymouth being a historic community, which it is, but it's slowly being torn down. They want, they want to use this uh, image of the City of Plymouth as a historic city, strictly as a marketing tool, so that they can add more liquor licenses and more bars and more parking lots to downtown Plymouth to the city center. So if, if you're going to say one thing and do another, then just, just, you know what, just get rid of the Historic District Commission once and for all. Just dissolve the whole thing because it, it, the whole thing just becomes pointless. So, And lastly, uh, I'd like to say that uh, elected and appointed officials all across Michigan, locally elected folks representing their communities, it's important for every elected and appointed official to know uh, not only that they are being watched, but more importantly, uh, to not allow your political processes uh, appear to be tainted in any way or appear to be rigged or non-transparent because um, you have to prove every time you get uh, in front of the, uh, the people at a public meeting, you have to prove every every time that you're, you're doing things by the book and it's an open process and um, and don't vote yes on something when you just said a few minutes before that, that you didn't support. Um, because when things like that happen, people lose faith, they lose trust in their local uh, elected and appointed officials. And um, uh, that's your that's your job. If you're going to be on a historic district commission, um, you have to do your homework. And what I saw at that meeting Wednesday night, uh, members of that commission were asking questions of a city staffer, what they can and can't do. Well, you're not supposed to take that position unless you know what your job is. And if you don't know what your job is, as a volunteer even, on a historic district commission. If, if you don't know what your job is, then you should need to get the hell off the commission and, and, and give your seat to somebody who does know what their job is. So anyway, uh, transparency and open and honest local government and uh, a uh, clearly um, um, seeable, honest process is what is important. And, and if you can't meet those standards, um, step aside and let somebody have your seat that can meet those standards. Thanks very much for looking in. Thank you. And lastly, as a very quick footnote, um, if you're on a city commission or a, a city council or, uh, for example, a, a, an appointed position on the commission, such as a historic district commission in your community or whatever, um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're not getting paid. It doesn't matter. Uh, as far as public trust is concerned, that that you're that that you have a day job and that you don't have time to do your homework, um, because on Wednesday night I saw a very ill-prepared, uninformed, and basically spineless historic district commission, because you had members of that commission asking questions of a city staff of city staffers asking questions of city staffers how they're supposed to perform their job and what they can and can't do and how they can and can't vote. There should not have been one question asked by that commission uh, to city staffers. They should be prepared and know what their job is. Now, granted, most people have day jobs and this is a volunteer, but you know what? Um, if, if you don't know what your job is and you have to ask questions at public meetings, what you can and can't do and what the process is, Quite frankly, you do not belong on that commission, and you should resign, step aside, and let somebody take over that chair that does have the time to do their homework and does have the time to know what their job is. Uh, straight up, that's, that's, that's your job as a public servant. A public servant means public servant. It doesn't mean paid public servant or unpaid public servant. It means public servant. So learn do the homework learn what your job is and act decisively don't act wishy-washy and 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 uh your job is not to kowtow to what city staffers want uh your job is to to follow your charter of your commission so that's all i wanted to add in thanks very much